All right, guys, so we're back with another video. So in the last video, we covered a lot. Okay, so we installed Express, we installed .env, we initialized an Express application, and we started listening to requests on port 3000, and we were handling certain routes in our application. And we noticed that, well, notice how when we had the app.get slash, right, for that route, we were sending back hello. Right, and then for app.get dashboard, we were sending back some JSON. So we can continue on and on and on, and we can handle so many different routes and send back different responses. And that can kind of give you an idea of how these websites work. Every single time I want to access a different location on the website, it's going to give me back a different response. Okay, and that response is coming from the server. All right, so now that we've covered that, the basics, the very, very basics of Express. Trust me, there's way more to learn with Express, but we're just getting started. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go to discordapp.com and I'm going to go to applications and I'm going to go ahead and let's see, we're going to create an application and I'm going to call this uh, OAuth2 example. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's just go to, okay. And you can add an icon if you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy the client ID. Okay, and I'm going to put that inside the .env file because we're going to need it later. So we're going to say client ID equals that. We're going to go ahead and get the client secret. You can also generate it if people ever uh, see it. This is something that you definitely want to keep secretive. You want to keep uh, in a .env file. So we're going to do client secret. Okay, and we're going to need, uh, I think, one more thing. Okay, so the client ID is uh, public to everyone. You never really have to worry about hiding it too much, but I'm just storing in the environment variable, in, in, in an environment variable. But if the client secret, if that ever gets exposed, you can just always regenerate it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and on this OAuth2 page, okay, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a redirect. Okay. So I know I haven't really explained OAuth 2 yet, so let me go ahead and explain it. So basically, in many applications, you can use other social media platforms such as Facebook or Google to log into an application. All right, These OAuth 2 strategies were implemented to save so much time for developers to focus on their application instead of having to worry about implementing their own custom strategy. So instead of having them to worry about, you know, creating their own custom sign up page with an email and password, they can just use Facebook and log in and it's just so much faster. Okay. And the way OAuth 2 works is basically the application is making a request to that platform server. So let's say, for example, if we're using Discord for our OAuth 2 strategy, our application, our Express application is going to make a request to the Discord API. It's going to verify to make sure that the person trying to author authorize himself with OAuth 2 is who they say they are. And if that is who they are, then what the Discord platform is going to do is going to send back what's called an access token. Typically, it's an access token and a refresh token. Okay. And luckily, we have libraries that handle all of the OAuth 2 for us with Passport. So we're going to use that later on in the video. But if what I just said didn't make sense, do not worry. Okay. I just wanted to explain briefly on what OAuth 2 is. I highly suggest you read about it. It's pretty cool. But when we actually get to the implementation, I'm going to go over it again. So don't panic. Just bear with me. So right now, just we can continue on and just create a redirect. So this redirect is a URI. Basically, whenever your application has successfully been authenticated, the user, whenever your application successfully authenticated the user, it's going to go ahead and redirect to this URL. So we're going to go ahead and do localhost 3000. And we're going to do, let's see, auth slash redirect. Okay. Now, obviously, if your application was hosted on your domain, you would type in your domain URL over here. You wouldn't type in localhost. But because we're in because we're in development mode, we're on our localhost, we're gonna use localhost. So we can save it. And let's go ahead and do client redirect. 
Let's do that. I think actually we don't need locos. We could probably just get away with this. We'll know later on, but we can just leave it like this for now. Okay, great. So now that we have our credentials, uh, we are good to go with uh, this part. And notice how over here on OAuth 2, there are these things called scopes. Okay. And whatever scope that you want to select pretty much gives the application authorization to view that information. So for example, if you select the identify scope, it will allow you to ident identify the user that is trying to authenticate themselves. If you select email, right, you you're going to be able to view the user's email. If you select guilds, you can see the user's guilds. Um, bot is for bot permission for bot accounts. You don't really have to worry about that because we're not really building you know, an application with bots. But yeah, there are a bunch of different scopes that you can uh, select. The important ones that you probably should select are probably identify email and guilds. Okay. Um, and you can also just read more about these scopes too on the developer documentations. Okay. And obviously we're not going to be touching bot because we're not building a bot. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys how to create the application. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just set up some routes for our backend. So I will see you guys in that video. Peace.